this video, I want to show you how we can highlight dates that have gone over a month from today. Now, I'm going to put some functions down in this column, but I'm not actually going to use them in this column. We'll delete them afterwards. I'm doing this purely to show you how we're building this function and how we're nesting them together so we can actually use it in conditional formatting to make these dates go red if they've gone over one month. Now the key to this is I'm using months, I'm not using days. So I don't want to put if it's gone over 30 days because some, day, some months might have 31 in there. I'm going to use exactly months. So let's start off by using what we call the date diff function. So we start off with equals date DIF open bracket and the first argument is this first date here comma and I want to know the difference between that and today so let's put today in here so this is dynamic it always updates itself and then a comma and in speech marks I'm putting an M because I want the difference in months okay so if I wanted the difference in years it would be a Y M for months D for days and there's a couple of others there's YM for months past the four years and there's MD for days past the four months so let's just close the bracket now we will get an error on this one and I'll explain why the reason we've got an error is because the date that we've got here the 2nd of August is in the future and this function needs the smaller date first and then the larger date but you'll see why we've got it this way round. So let's copy this one down and you'll see that we've got the errors where we've got future dates and past dates we've got some numbers. Now this, don't forget this is giving the four months it is ignoring how many days as well. So the 8th of June is actually from to the 9th of July is one month and one day really but it ignores that one day. But what we really want to do is add the days on as well. Okay, so let's do that. We're going to use a concatenate to do this. So let's just press F2 to edit this. So we've got the first part. We'll use the ampersand or the end sign to concatenate that. And we have to use speech marks here because I want to put a full stop, okay? because I'm going to turn this into a decimal in effect. The whole number will be how many months difference and anything after the decimal will be how many days. So 0.12 would be 12 days past the full month. So let's put the same function in. We're going to do another concatenate. Let's put the ampersand and then I'll just copy this function to save type in it. So we've got the date diff a2 which is the date and we want the difference between that and today and instead of m we're just going to put md because we want how many days past the four months if you just put d you'd get all the days between those two dates so we just want the days past the four months close that bracket off and then press enter and again, we've still got an error on that first one, but that's what I want. So let's copy that all the way down. And now you'll see that we've actually got some values down here. One means one month, and I'm using the decimal as days. So it's one month, one day. The 9th of June, which is exactly one month before the 9th of July, is one month and no days. 13th of Jan is five months and 26 days. It's not 0.26, it's 26 days. The problem now is that these are left justified, which is telling me that these are actually text. That's because we've concatenated and concatenation is about joining text together. So let's turn these into values now. So let's go up to the first one, press F2, and to turn this into a value, 
I'll do this actually up on the formula bar because it might be easier for you to see. Let's go just after the equal sign, type value, open bracket, and then go to the end and close a bracket. So what that does is turns a text into a value. Again, let's press enter and copy that first one down and now they are right justified so we can see those as values instead of text. Okay, we're nearly there. The next stage of this is to turn these errors into zeros. So what we're going to do, again, we'll edit this. I'll do this up here on the formula bar for you again. Just go after the equals and type if error, open bracket, Okay, and then right at the end of the formula, put a comma and a zero. So in other words, if there's an error, put a zero. If there's no error, do that long concatenation and turn it into a value. So let's press enter and then copy that down. And now we've got some zeros where there's errors. So this is good. We can use this as part of our formula now. So that is what we're doing. We're converting all of these into numbers that we can do something with. So in other words, anything that is greater than one means that it's more than one month. So 1.1 just means one month and one day. 5.26 means five months and 26 days. So anything greater than one, we want that to go red. Okay, so that's what we're doing. So let's copy that whole function across there so highlight it control c and now we'll de we'll delete those these in a moment let's highlight these dates because that's what we're going to conditionally format go to the home tab conditional formatting and come down to new rule and the one that you want on here is use formula to determine which cells to format so you click that one so what we want to do is paste that function into here and remember that comes back with one of these numbers so it's like a logical test so if that number is greater than one which means it's more than one month we need to click the format we'll have the fill as red we'll have our font as black and bold click OK and click OK and there you have all the dates that are greater than one month. We can delete these out now so as we don't need those we just wanted to highlight all the dates that have gone over one month. So I hope you found that useful. If you like this video please click the thumbs up and click the subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you. Mm -hmm.